Well, what's up guys, I'm Chris Doughty, AKA Dalfinator, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna go through the fastest settings in Gran Turismo 7. Whether you're doing license tests, single player races, or online sport mode, these settings will help you be faster. Let's get straight into this one. The settings menu we're looking for is buried in the pre-driving menu. Uh, just before you're about to hit the track, uh, that's where you'll find it. So you can get to it from various places. Uh, I'm gonna to choose to go through uh, World Circuit and the easiest place to go and test out these settings. Just, just hit time trial, choose your favorite track and go to time trial. Once the pre-driving menu has loaded, choose the settings button here and you've got a full range of options. Here you will find a lot of options. In this video, we're gonna discuss assist settings and controller settings. Make sure you're subscribed for future videos where we'll discuss everything in more detail. So assist settings. First option you've got is manual or automatic gearbox. Pretty self-explanatory. Manual gearbox has the potential to be the fastest, but if you're new to Gran Turismo series, don't be afraid to use automatic while you get to know the ropes. Next is the presets. That's just a predetermined selection based on beginner, intermediate or expert. We don't need to worry about this because we're setting every option individually. Traction control is the next option on the list. And this is the global default setting. We'll cover this in a lot more detail later in the video. Now we get to ABS settings. And similarly to GT Sport, I went and tested all of these. I tried running a bunch of laps with ABS turned off, trying to brake as efficiently as possible, but it's very, very difficult, almost impossible to not lock a tire and definitely impossible to be as fast as using ABS on default. Between weak and default, I didn't notice a great deal of difference, but my 100% recommendation is to use ABS on default. Auto drive allows automatic braking and automatic steering if you require it. Certainly isn't the fastest way to drive and I'd highly recommend leaving this off. These next options are quite interesting and probably very useful for learning a new track. One thing to note, cone markers aren't available at all, completely missing from GT7. I use them a lot in GT Sport, so this is a huge blow to me. Rip cone markers, you will be missed. Uh, other options, you've got the braking zone and also the braking indicator. I'm going to show you some gameplay footage in a moment where all of these are turned on and you get to see how they can help you to learn tracks. As you can see, all the track assists are on. You've got the driving line, the braking uh, area. The rev counter also flashes red when you need to be on the brakes. The yellow uh, markers there, they're basically the clipping points. Good to get your uh, turning points, apex points and exit points. And it's interesting to note that the braking zones are dynamic. So if you approach a corner with less speed, the braking zone will be shorter than if you're approaching with much higher speed. I'm not quite sure how accurate they are, um, but they certainly give you a good indication. Certainly great to learn a brand new track for the first time, but most of the time playing this game, I'll turn all of these assists off. Interesting this one, reset car after leaving the track. In GT Sport, this was a setting that was per race or per lobby. It's interesting they've put it as a per player choice. I'm not sure how this will translate into sport mode, but this could be useful uh, in your single player campaign. If you happen to make a mistake, it'll get you back on the track faster. Active stability management. This is another interesting one because in GT Sport, this was always disabled for sport mode. I checked in GT7 Daily Race A this week and this option was allowed. Going forwards, I won't be using this option, but if you are having trouble controlling the car, this may help, but I wouldn't rely on it. Turn it off as soon as you can. Counter steer assistance is the next option. And again, like the previous one, this is enabled for sport mode, certainly for race A. Whether that will change in the future, who knows? But I, I tested driving with this on strong and I, I could barely notice any difference. I could still spin out. I would highly recommend it leaving this turned off. Now let's revisit the traction control settings. I did some testing on this in GT7 and the results were quite surprising. I did a controlled corner at Sakuba, the final corner, uh, turning in and then just getting on the gas and just letting the car do what it wanted to naturally do. And in GT7, it naturally wants to spin out with traction control on zero. Switching to one, we're gonna repeat the exact same process and quite surprising to me the car just sticks really really sticks very well so just having traction control on one is a huge help the way gt7 is the cars are much more dynamic they're much more on the edge to control 
Now, unlike GT Sport, I think we're going to see traction control being used a lot more on the higher power cars. Don't be afraid to use traction control. And in my testing, I even went much further. I ran a few laps with traction control on five, and it's way less prohibitive than it was in GT Sport. So traction control has had a huge upgrade for GT7, and it's quite a viable uh, solution to get you a reasonable lap time. I think the very fastest lap times will be achieved with traction control on zero. However, you may get yourself a whole load of consistency using a high or at least traction control one. You can access the same uh, settings menu from the pause menu while you're driving. Uh, but in this case, we're going to go for controller settings. And specifically this time, controller sensitivity. Right now I'm using the controller. Uh, I've got the sensitivity set to minus two, the lowest setting, and it just feels a little bit more lazy than it does on the higher settings. Now, my comparison to GT Sport, this range seems a lot more narrow. So the difference between the minimum and the maximum is not so much, but there is a subtle difference still. I found it best to use a high sensitivity but this may be car specific and certainly driver specific. You should consider the controller sensitivity as almost as an extension to the tuning options you have in GT7. Just like in GT Sport, you have access to some things on the fly through your MFD. You have on the fly adjustment of your traction control and you also have on the fly adjustment of your brake bias. I will probably do a more detailed in-depth video on brake bias, but typically speaking, if your car understeers on the brakes, send the brake bias to the rear. If your car oversteers on the brakes, send your brake bias to the front. Now let's talk about force feedback settings. Also accessed through the settings and controller settings menu. We have two settings here, force feedback max torque and force feedback sensitivity. Max torque is the maximum amount of torque that your wheel can deliver at any time. Now, I use a Logitech G29. Uh, I really like the setting number three for this option. Force feedback sensitivity is more to do with the detail that the force feedback wheel represents to the driver based on road surface, uh, return to center. Typically, I find a lower value here to be much more looser a higher value has a bit more tightness to it, much more return to center feeling. I've done a lot of testing with this in GT Sport and in GT7, and the results are quite similar. And quite frankly, that I don't think there is any one golden setting that is the fastest. It's gonna come down to driver feel, personal preference, and also the wheel that you're using. I will be using my Logitech G29 with the settings on screen right now, but make sure you're subscribed. Keep checking out my videos. I'll put my settings in the description to every video I post, and if they evolve, uh, you will see them in the description there below. Playing in the background now is me trying to get around the track with ABS turned off, and it's a real handful. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments below. Hit the like button if you found it useful. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're gonna be fully engaged with GT7 as we go forwards. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.